Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to explain about the power system protection. So, as per JNTU syllabus, we are going to see the what is actually the power system and what is the protection. So, in this power system protection, you are having the 5 units. If you see the syllabus of power system protection, you are having the 5 units. In that 5 units, first unit is protective relays. Unit 1 is protective relays. In that, you are having the introduction of protective relays, need for power system, uh, power system protection, effects of faults and evaluation of protective relays, zones of protection, primary protection and backup protection, essential qualities of protection and classification of protective relays and schemes. There are different types of protective relays are there, we will see about that and then you are having the current transformers and potential transformers. And at the last of the first unit, first part, you are having the basic relay terminology. What are the relays are there? Uh, what is the terminology related to that particular release? We will see that. And in the second half of your first unit, operating principles and construction of relays, there are different types of relays that is electromagnetic relays and a thermal relays, and you are having the static relays microprocessor based relays, different types of relays we are having. So, how these relays are going to be used and these relays how they will constructed and they will works, we will see. Okay. And in the second unit we will see about the over current protection, time current characteristics, current setting, over current protection that is over current protective release, directional release protection of parallel feeders, protection of ring mains, phase faults and earth faults, combined earth fault and phase fault, directional earth fault relays. These are the different types of relays we will see in the second unit first part. And in the second half of the second unit is distance protection, that is impedance relays, reactance relay, more relay and uh, what are the input quantities for different impedance relays and effect of arc resistance, effect of power springs, effect of line length and source impedance on the performance of distance relays, all these things we will see in the second half. In the last of the second half is auto reclosing we are going to see. And in the third unit, uh, mainly it deals with the pilot relaying schemes that is wire pilot protection, carrier current protection mainly we are going to see. And a protection of AC machines and protection of uh, generators and protection of alternators, transformers, protection of bus bars and frame leakage protection we are going to see in the third unit. And if you are coming for the fourth unit, we will see about the static relays and microprocessor based relays. Static relays means which are not having any mobile parts, we will see what are the static relays and how that static relays are going to be implemented with the help of amplitude, phase comparators and with the help of electronic components we are going to design a static relays. And here you are having the microprocessor based relays, these microprocessor based relays are also called as numerical relays. So, we will see about that microprocessor based relays with the help of microprocessor we are going to realize that over current relays and directional relays and distance relays, all these things we are going to see in the fourth unit. If you coming for the fifth unit, that is fifth unit mainly deals with the circuit breakers. Circuit breakers means with which we can make or break a circuit. So, that we will see in the uh, fifth unit, right. And next, we are having the fuses. There are different types of circuit breakers are there. We will see that circuit breakers in the uh, fifth unit first part. If you are coming for the fifth unit second part, you are having the fuses. How the fuses are going to be works? What are the different fuse characteristics are there? What are the different types of fuses are there? Applications of HRC fuses, high rupture capacity fuses and different types of fuses we are going to see in the fifth unit second half. So, first if we see the learning objectives of this uh, unit 1 lecture 1 that is first one is to understand the electrical power system. What is actually the power system and what is the need of a protection for the different power system equipments. So, that we will see in this lecture and here to understand the basic basics of protection system and next to understand the elements of protection system. 
So, these things we will see in this lecture. What are the different elements are there for the protection system? We will see in this lecture. And here, if you are coming for the power system, what is actually the power system? What are the components you are going to have in the power system? So, that is a introduction of protective relays in the first unit we will see here. And here, mainly we are having the a generating station which will generate the power electrical power system means it is a generating station we will generate the power and we are step up that power whatever generated power is there that generated power is going to be step up and then we are going to transmit that step up power whatever the power is there that power we are going to transmit with the help of transmission lines and it will finally reaches to the distribution centers at distribution centers you are having the distribution transformer that is a step down transformer. Let us take uh, we are generating here at the generating station we are generating 11 kV. In India we are having mostly 11 kV generation system. So, we are generating the 11 kV voltage and that 11 kV voltage is going to be step up with the help of step up transformer that may be to 220 kV or 400 kV or 765 kV. So, here we are step up that voltage and we are transmitting with the help of a transmission system and at the distribution stations we are going to reach that uh, 400 kV let us take 400 kV we are reaching here. That 400 kV is going to be step down with the help of step down transformer that may be to 11 kV. So, that 11 kV is going to be used as a primary distribution and after that primary distribution you are having the secondary distribution that is at the secondary distribution stations we are having the again one more step down transformer that step down transformer is going to be step downs the voltage to 415 volts that is a three phase voltage 415 volts. So, that 415 volts is going to be uh, sub, uh, supplied to the consumers uh, home for homes we are going to consume that is what we are calling as some commercial loads are there domestic loads are there. So, the domestic loads are nothing but the homes whatever we are using in our homes we are going to get that power. So, here we are getting the power from the generating station to the local loads with having different power system equipments. Here we are having a different power equipments at that generated power is finally reached to the homes or domestic loads. Here we are at the domestic loads we are having the fiber system. In that fiber system uh, in the distribution system we are having the 5 wires. What are those 5 wires means 3 wires are for R, Y, B 3 phases R, Y, B 3 phases and one more wire is for neutral that is fourth wire and fifth wire is for electrical lighting supply. Whatever we are having the street lights for that street lights we are only required to turn on only during the night time and during the day time it should not turn on it should be switched off. So, for controlling of the power supply we are going to use the fifth wire for the lighting purpose. So, we are getting the total uh, fiber system at the distribution station right. So, here what we are having means we are having the different power system equipments all these power system equipments are costlier equipments. Here if we are having any faults in any stage it may be distribution station or it may be at the transmission system or it may be at the generator or it may be at the uh, transformer whatever it may be at any place in the electrical power system if we are having any faults if you are not giving or if you are not providing any proper protection system then we are going to lose the costlier equipments the costlier equipments are going to be gets damaged in order to avoid the damage of that particular equipments we need to provide the protection that protection system is only 5 percentage of the cost of the total equipment cost. Whatever the equipment cost is there if we are considering a generating station. So, this generating station is having the generator that generator may cost around crores. So, if you invest only 5 percentage of that cost then we can provide the protection for that equipment otherwise we may lose uh, generator because of the faults which are there in that. In the generator if you consider at the generator the most severe fault is LG fault. In case of generator if you consider the most severe fault is LG fault. In case of transmission system if you consider you are having the most severe fault is symmetrical faults that is three, three phase faults. 
Okay. So, for that purpose in order to avoid the losing of the equipments we are going to install protective system in all the cases for all the electrical power system equipments we are going to provide the protection. So, here there are some protect protection equipments that is here if you see the switch gear what is actually the switch gear? Switch gear means it is the operator apparatus used for switching controlling and protecting the electrical circuits and equipments is known as switch gear. It is used to energize and de-energize equipment. So, energize and de-energize equipment means turning on and turning off of the equipment. And next you are having the different elements. Switch gear means it is just like switches. We are having for low voltage controlling we are having the switches, but for high voltage controlling we are having some switch gear. What are the switch gear components we will see here one by one. So, we are having some elements of switch gear. First one is fuses, second one is air brake switch, the third one is knife switches and fourth one is load interrupter, fifth one is line isolator and the last one is circuit breaker. What is this uh, fuses, circuit breakers and air brake switches, what are the knife switches, what are the load interrupters, line isolators, we will see uh, elements one by one. So, first if you see fuse, so everyone, everyone knows what is actually the fuse. It is a small piece of metal which is inserted in the circuit which melts when excessive current flows through it and it will break the circuit. When excessive current is going to be flows through that then it will break the circuit. So, what is that formula and what formula it bases means temperature or heat generated in that is equal to Q which is equal to I f square I f square into R into T you are having. So, I f square R into T you are having that is the temperature which is generated in the fuse when the excessive current is going to be flows through that fuse. So, it operates only under abnormal conditions or only under fault conditions. If you are having any fault conditions or abnormal conditions, we will use fuse to break that circuit whenever there is a excessive current is going to be flows through that. So, if you see the circuit diagram of this fuse, you are having here the fuse, this is what the fuse, here if there is a fuse wire, one single lead we are using here that is as a fuse wire and this is what your fuse holder, you are going to insert this fuse into this fuse holder and you are having the contacts of the fuse, two contacts are there and you are having the base of that fuse. So, we are going to insert this fuse into the fuse holder and whenever there is a excessive current is going to be flows in this uh, fuse, that fuse wire is going to be melts and it will break the circuit we have to replace that fuse with the another one, right. It will not operate automatically, we have to manually replace that fuse wire, so, that is a fuse. Next if you coming for the egg air brake switch, what is actually the air brake switch? Air brake switch is a switch gear device that uses air as a dielectric medium. Air brake switches are widely installed throughout the distribution networks for use as both isolation or switching points. So, usually we will see this air brake switches at the transformer distribution transformers. So, there we are going to control at the distribution transformers we are going to control the transformer to switch on or switch off. Mainly at the gang switches at the uh, transformers we are having the gang switches to operate that gang switches we are going to use this air brake switches. These are usually employed in outdoor installations only, the transformers are mostly installed at the outdoor. So, that is why we are going to install this air brake switches in the outdoors only. Next if you see the another switch gear element is knife switch, what is actually the knife switch, where we are going to use this knife switches. Mostly these knife switches we are going to see in the electrical laboratories. To control your electrical laboratory power we are going to use knife switches. So, knife switch is a type of switch used for control the flow of electricity in the circuit. It is composed of hinge 
which allows a metal lever or a knife to be lifted from or inserted into the slot or jaw. So, this is what your hinge which is going to be moves up and down. So, there is a lever or metal lever or a knife which we are going to insert into the slot or a jaw. So, there are different types of knife switches are there one is a SPST switch SPDT SPST means single pole single throw SPDT means single pole double throw and DPST means double pole single throw and next you are having DPDT double pole double throw you can throw both the sides ok. Next you are having the TPST triple pole single throw and the last one is TPDT triple pole double throw right. So, that is the four switches you are going to have sorry six switches you are, you are going to have mainly in knife switches. You may have some different switches other switches also, but as of now here I am just showing only six switches All right. Next there is a load interrupter. What is actually the load interrupter and where we are going to use this load interrupter? Load interrupter will be operate in order to reduce the overloads in the system. So, in order to disconnect the overloads in any system wherever you are having the overloads are occurs at that places we are going to use this load interrupters. It is operated only at full load conditions. Whenever you are having the full load conditions more than the rated values of voltages sorry more than the rated values of loads are there at that particular locations we are going to use this load interrupters. So, this is what the circuit of your load interrupter it is opening of the load interrupter. Let us example let us take an example for that to explain about the load interrupter. We are having some if you see here you are having some generator which is having the maximum capacity of 500 megawatts and you are having the different loads with if you consider the total loads that is a 600 megawatts of load. So, here first load is 500 mega sorry 100 megawatts next 150 megawatts again 150 megawatts again 100 megawatts the total load is 600 megawatts. If you see here 600 megawatts of load is there and the generation whatever the generation is there here that generation is only 500 megawatts. So, this 500 megawatts cannot be supplied for the 600 megawatts of load as the maximum capacity of this generator is 500 megawatts this generator can only supply 500 megawatts, but the loads are 600 megawatts of loads are there. So, how to supply this means we cannot supply. So, we have to disconnect any one of the load from this. So, which load is having lowest priority we are going to disconnect that load either it may be a first load or the last load. Which load is having the lowest priority for that load we are going to disconnect from the generator here so that we can provide the continuous supply for the remaining loads. If you are not going to disconnect this load then what happens due to the overloads the voltage fluctuations are going to be occurs the frequency is not going to be the same. So, because of there are some problems are, you are going to get. So, by using the load interrupter we are going to disconnect one load which is having lowest priority here that is the use of load interrupter. Where we are using this load interrupter means it is used only at full load conditions at what conditions we are using means at only full load conditions we are using this load interrupter. And next line isolator as we are using some circuit breakers in the system that circuit breakers disconnect the supply or disconnect the circuit from the faulty section to the healthy section, but that will provides only centimeters of gap because of the air ionization there is a possibility of continuity of the supply from fixed contact to the mobile contact because of the air ionization because of the high voltages we are having in the system. So, in order to disconnect the total supply or total circuit we need to use line isolators which will provides meters of gap which will provides meters of gap where are circuit breakers are used during the all load conditions, but line isolators used only during at no load conditions. Whenever we are disconnecting the supply from the 
with by using the circuit breaker then only we are going to operate this line isolator. So, this is the line isolator which is connected in the circuit and there you are having the opening of the line isolator ok right. Next if you coming for the circuit breaker, a circuit breaker is an equipment with which we can make or we can make or break a circuit under all load conditions. So, that is during the no load, during the full load, during fault conditions or abnormal conditions the circuit breaker can be used. There are different types of circuit breakers are there mainly in our homes whatever the circuit breakers we are using just I will show here, but in your uh, power system protection subject you are going to learn the circuit breakers which are used for the transmission system, distribution system and at the generator stations are different uh, transformers there are different types of circuit breakers are there that circuit breakers we are going to use in your uh, power system protection you are going to learn. And here there are different types of circuit breakers. So, that circuit breakers what I am saying here is uh, SF 6 circuit breakers, vacuum circuit breakers, minimum oil circuit breakers, bulk oil circuit breakers, different types of circuit breakers are there. But if you see here in your homes whatever the circuit breakers you are using, so that is uh, first one is MCB miniature circuit breaker and these are the different circuit breakers you are having and next here it is MCCB molded case circuit breaker and the next one is ELCB earth leakage circuit breaker ok right. Next if you see the summary of this lecture there is a fuse you are using as I have explained about the fuse, fuse will operate only under abnormal conditions during the normal conditions or a fault conditions we cannot operate that automatically it has to operate only manually that is fuse if the fuse blown we have to replace the fuse it will takes the time but whereas if you use circuit breaker directly you can turn on after fault clear you can directly switch on that circuit breaker that is advantage of circuit breaker Next we have learned about the knife switches. Knife switches are used in electrical laboratories only for controlling the electrical power or the current in the laboratories. And next we have studied about the load interrupter. Load interrupter is operated only at full load conditions to disconnect the load from the system. If there are excess loads are there then we can disconnect the loads by using load interrupter. Next we are having the line isolator. What is this line isolator? As the circuit breakers are providing low or small gap between the fixed and mobile contacts in order to provide the large gap or meters of space between the contacts of the uh, between the faulty and healthy sections we are going to use line isolators in order to avoid the air ionization which will provide the continuity of the supply. In order to avoid that we are going to use line isolators. These line isolators are operates only at no load condition. After operating the circuit breaker we are going to use, we are going to operate this line isolator. And at the final we have studied about the circuit breaker with which we can make a circuit or break a circuit. It is an uh, electrical switch gear equipment with which we can make or break a circuit. This can operate under no load condition, full load condition and fault conditions. Thank you. We have studied all these things uh, ele elements of switch gear. If you have any doubts we can discuss later. Thank you. Thank you for listening.